LEGO is doing flowers again and they're kinda growing on me. They went from art passes a few years ago to becoming one of my favorite contenders when I'm considering gifting LEGO to adults. With that being said, I'll be taking a look at the upcoming Wildflower Bouquet and Dried Flower Centerpiece sets and sharing my thoughts with you guys. There's so many shapes and different kinds of flowers and greens that I'll go and show them one by one. The leather leaf fern, when compared to the real deal, does not look that accurate. The cow parsleys, however, do look similar to their real-life counterparts, with a total of two included. The same amount of Welsh poppies. There's also three corn flowers, two blue and one white, maybe still growing to the blue mature face, and the two lavenders look spot on. The lupins are the most part intensive flowers of the whole set and you're probably noticing some very interesting part choices for the petals that I will be covering in detail later in this video. Now we get to the one-offs of the set in the form of the Larkspur flower with eye-catching blue shades and two gerbera daisies, an orange one and a magenta one. When looking at these all together, it feels a bit much, honestly. There's too many different colors and shapes, so maybe I would have liked the number of different flowers to be halved, and if the price tag of the set were to be maintained, then including a few extra copies of each of the chosen flowers would be a solution. I'm not a flower specialist though, and I'm sure a lot of people will love this set just the way it is. I do specialize on LEGO though, and the botanical sets usually offer a ton of recolors and clever parts usage. The ferns include a new recolor for the palm tree leaves in dark green. You get 15 total in the set, which is great. The poppies made great use of the shoulder pad elements for the petals, a recolored Aston Martin upcap element in light yellow for the interior details, and a green recolor of the 32 studs long Technic cross axle, making these types of builds less part intensive when compared to the ones built with lots of connectors and axles. The corn flowers have tons of cool parts like eggshell elements in white, blue and bright green, these new botanical elements, brown minifig heads, purple flower stems, blue clips, it's crazy. The lupin petals are made out of pirate heads, recolored in purple and magenta, which is such a fun detail, also highlighted in the building instructions, like many other fun details and info across the whole build. The lark spur doesn't look like much, but it has more of the new botanical elements, light blue minifigure heads, light blue flower and leaf elements, but my favorite has to be the bright green sausage used to hold the flowers at an angle. Onto the gerberas, petals made with boat oars aren't a new thing but still cool to see, so you get a ton of bright orange and magenta oars, as well as orange and lavender clips to hold them in place. The middle was done with dark brown Asian hats and at the base we have green barrel elements. 900 pieces for a $59 LEGO set is objectively great value for money, but most of these elements are oddly specific and only a handful of people will actually use them for custom builds, so if you're looking into building up your collection, this set will not be a good choice, but as a gift to a non-LEGO fan with simple builds that anyone can tackle, this one is a great gift. But the dried flower centerpiece has to be my favorite out of these two. It is probably harder to display or a not so common display piece versus the flowers in a jar type thing, and it's also somewhat seasonal with the autumn color tones, but feels to me a much more cohesive thing than the wildness of the bouquet set with all of the different flowers, colors and shapes. It also appeals to me a lot more as the parts used seem more useful and interesting than the ones from the other set. On top of which, it contains regular looking pieces to build the display plate of the centerpiece. The building instructions call out a few of the flowers and plants on the build. The pearl millet stalks done with Technic gears. The cosmos flowers done with the epaulet minifigure element in sets of three built upside down. The wheat stalks done with a bunch of eggshell elements in dark tan stacked on top of each other. A dark red gerbera exactly like the ones from the bouquet set and a dried rose, cleverly built with a combination of mudguard elements and the shoulder pads for a brilliant result. But to make things more interesting on a personal level, there's a lot of actual botanical elements used, out of which I wanna highlight all of the olive green ones in decent quantities and variety, with a special mention for the four spruce trees exclusive to the set. 
The set was designed to be displayed in a couple of different ways. Standard way, you would expect it to, laying flat on a surface, but it can also be hanged on a wall due to having wall hanger elements on the back. Included in the set, there's also a small build that lets you display both halves of the centerpiece at a 90 degree angle, so you can connect three sets for the ultimate centerpiece display as advertised in the box. Very sneaky from LEGO. Both halves of the set were very similar builds, aside from the differences with the Rose and Gerbera, which wasn't that fun. But the set provides two instruction booklets, and as seen in the box, it's possible to be built by two people at the same time, which is something I do really like. This one priced at $49 with little over 800 pieces provides a lot more value in my eyes than the bouquet, but I can see how people might be more inclined to get that one over this. Regardless of all of that, LEGO is being really smart with these types of sets, capitalizing on a whole new target audience who may not be into LEGO at all, so good job on that. YouTube thinks you'll like this video next, so be sure to watch it and subscribing so you don't miss new uploads.